What's up, my name is Taken Over here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another exciting video. In this one, I'll be showing you how to optimize Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 3, the latest release that now features no building and more aiming, so FPS is even more important than it has been before. This video is only going to lightly touch on optimizing your computer, it's mainly going to focus on the actual game itself. If you'd like to optimize your PC for even better performance, check the description down below for super in-depth guides, including Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started here. First of all, go ahead and update Windows and your graphics card driver if you haven't already. Hit start, type in update, and go through the Windows update process. Then for your graphics card, in the description down below you'll find download links for Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA. You can either download and install the latest drivers through those links, or of course, if you have software like NVIDIA GeForce Experience, you can use that to update your graphics card driver instead. Speaking of updates, is it worth moving from Windows 10 to Windows 11 for performance? No, there's no specific features in Windows 11 that give you extra performance that make it worthwhile to move from 10 to 11. The only reason you should do it is because you like the new features or you're ready to go through the huge learning curve of the different UI. Then let's go ahead and clear out some extra space on your drives, which is especially important if they're near capacity. Hit start, type in cleanup and open disk cleanup as administrator. When it opens, choose C drive and click OK. Wait for it to scan. And when it pops up, simply tick everything on the list except for a recycle bin, which you can go through and clear out later manually and thumbnails down here if you use lots of pictures on your computer. Then click OK, delete files and wait for this deletion process to finish. If you have your game installed to a different drive, make sure to open it up once again as admin and select that drive instead. Say D drive and follow through the exact same steps. When it's done, hold start and press R and inside of this run dialog, type percentage temp percentage and hit enter. Then a new file browser will open up. Hit control A to select everything, then shift delete to delete them, skipping the recycle bin. Click yes, wait for it to scan and click continue if necessary with do this for all checked. If you see any areas like this, click do this for all and skip. Rinse and repeat for all the errors you ran into. When it's done, you should be saving a ton of space on your computer. Then head back to this PC, C drive and Windows. Inside of here, scroll down to temp, once again, control A, shift delete and enter. Skip all areas. And now we're done clearing out temporary and leftover files on our computer. Now let's get into the power plan. Hit start, type in power space plan and click on choose a power plan. Inside of here, you'll likely have balanced, power saver, as well as high performance options with one of the first two selected. Simply choose high performance and you should immediately notice a difference. If you have CPU specific high performance plans, pick these instead. If you'd like to try out the ultimate performance power plan, in the description down below, you'll find a bit of code that you can copy. Hit start, type in CMD, run it as admin, and paste it in here with control V, then hit enter. Upon doing so and refreshing your power option screen, you should see a brand new power performance plan. Select this and you should immediately notice an improvement in performance. Now let's go ahead and optimize our running programs on our computer and programs that start up with our computer. Press Control Shift and Escape all at once to bring up the Windows Task Manager. On the Processes tab, you can sort by CPU, Memory and GPU to see what is using what on your computer. The fewer background programs you have running, the more resources you have available for your game to take and run at the best performance possible. Then we'll be heading across the Startup tab at the very top. Inside of here, sort by status and everything listed as enabled starts up when your computer logs in. You can find unwanted programs, right click and click disable. That way you'll have to manually start them yourself, speeding up the startup process and of course you'll have less programs to close when you want to play a game. If you're a power user, head across to services at the very top, click open services and inside of here, sort by startup type. Everything listed as automatic starts up with your computer. Double click unwanted services and change it from automatic to manual. That way, either you or a program has to start it up when it's necessary. Don't change them to disabled. This is a very basic guide on optimizing things that start up with your computer. And instead, in the description down below, you'll find a really in-depth guide that shows you how to get to programs that aren't even listed here. Of course, if you're one who uses overlays, such as the Discord overlay, those could decrease FPS and increase input latency. If you don't actively use them or you don't actively need them, you should try turning off overlays that you don't use. This includes performance monitoring overlays, which you shouldn't have running unless you're specifically benchmarking games. Every tiny bit of available resources matter when you're trying to get the most out of your computer. Finally, let's get into some game-specific ones. For this, you'll need to know exactly where the game is installed. 
For me, I know that I installed Fortnite on a different drive. If you have absolutely no idea where the game is installed, simply open up a file browser with start and E, head across to this PC and open the drive that you think the game is installed on. I'm pretty sure I placed it on E, so I'll open it up and in the top right, I'll search for Fortnite. Eventually, you should see a bunch of results. You can simply right click and open the file directory. For me, however, I know it's in games, Epic Games, Fortnite, Fortnite Game, Binaries, and Win64. Scrolling down, simply right click Fortnite Client, Win64 Shipping.exe, and click Properties. Then inside of here, on the Compatibility tab, look for Disable Full Screen Optimizations and make sure it's ticked. Then click Change High DPI Settings. Inside of here, we'll look for High DPI Scaling, tick this, and choose Application. Then hit OK, Apply, and OK. I'll right click the path at the very top and choose copy address as text. Hit start and type in GPU, then open graphics settings. Inside of here, we'll simply click browse after selecting desktop app, click in an empty spot at the very top, hit control V to paste and enter to go to that folder. Now we can double click on Fortnite client win64 shipping.exe and it should be added to the list. Then simply scroll down until you find it, select it and click options. Then choose High Performance and click Save. As simple as that, it should now be using the best graphics card in your computer. When we're done here, choose Gaming on the left hand side on Windows 11, otherwise click Home in the top left and open the Gaming tab. Then we'll open the Xbox Game Bar and make sure that this is turned off. Then we can head back and into the Game Mode section. Simply make sure that this is turned on. And finally, if you ever use the Xbox Game Bar, it could be using some kind of NVIDIA Shadow Play-like feature in the background, recording your gameplay while you're playing, causing extra latency. We can make sure that this is turned off if you have the Xbox Game Bar installed by hitting Start and typing in Game Bar. Then open the Xbox Game Bar. Then click Settings at the very top, look for the Capturing tab, and inside of here, simply make sure that Record in the background while I'm playing a game is turned off. Then you can click close and click anywhere in an empty spot to close the game bar. Just a quick note, if you're using a laptop, try and use an external display as it may give you better FPS. And on top of this, make sure that you have the high resolution texture pack disabled. Open up the Epic Games Launcher, head across to your library and in the top right, search for Fortnite. Then inside of Fortnite, click the three dots and choose options. Then we're looking for high resolution textures. Simply make sure that this is turned off. Click apply and a small download should then be run and we should be able to open up the game. Now finally, before we actually launch up the game itself, we need to know if the game is GPU or CPU limiting us so we can optimize further. When you're in a demanding scene or running a benchmark in game, hit Control Shift and Escape to bring up the Windows Task Manager. Head across to the Performance tab and simply see if your GPU is hitting 100% all the time or your CPU is hitting 100%. Whatever is maxed out all the time is what you're limited by. If you find that your graphics card is holding you back, it's a good idea to disable hardware acceleration in other programs on your computer, most importantly browsers. This includes Chrome, Firefox, and programs based on Electron and similar frameworks like Discord and Steam. In Discord, for example, head across to User Settings in the bottom left, then on the Advanced tab, you'll find hardware acceleration that you can turn off. By doing so, Discord and other programs will use more of your CPU instead of your GPU in the background. They may become more stuttery when lots of animations and video decoding or encoding are going on, so it may be a good idea to re-enable these later when you're not playing super demanding games. Of course, the alternative is to simply close those programs as well, including your browser. Speaking of CPU or GPU limited, if you find that your CPU limited instead of GPU, which this guide is mainly going to focus on in just a bit when we get to the in-game settings, it may be a good idea to actually raise some of the settings in-game to balance out your computer. If you're CPU limited, you'll find that no matter how low you drop your in-game graphic settings, you won't gain any performance. Instead, the game will just look worse and worse while keeping the same performance. If you find that that's happening, it's a good idea to crank some settings up especially ones that you may notice more than others, such as lighting and shadow effects. But anyways, with that out of the way, let's get into more game-specific options and finally launch up the game itself. In this video, I won't have FPS comparisons. However, in my previous optimization guide, I did have them there, including everything from DirectX 11, 12, and the performance mode will be enabling in just a moment as well. Simply close any notifications, if any, and in the top right, click the three lines and choose the options button down here. Then we'll head into settings. Now on the display tab at the very top, 
we'll have all of our options here that should give us the most FPS possible. Of course, this guide is going to tell you the lower you set things, the better your FPS will be. However, I'll be mentioning some specific options you may want to keep higher to get you higher visibility, not just FPS. First of all, windowed mode should always be set to full screen for the best possible FPS. I have issues recording it, so I'll be leaving it in windowed full screen for now, as full screen only supports my ultra wide display, not the default 16 by 9. The frame rate limit should be set to unlimited, but you can cap this if you find that the game is eating your entire graphics card and leaving nothing for something like, say, OBS Studio to record, and it's leaving you with choppy, laggy recordings. The graphics options are completely your preference here. Scrolling down to graphics quality, if you have performance mode enabled at the very bottom, which I would highly recommend for better performance, you'll see a limited number of options. If we crank it back to DirectX 11 and restart the game, as you can see, there's a ton more options now running DirectX 11 mode. We'll get back to performance mode in just a moment. The auto set quality at the very top here will adjust everything to perfectly match your computer, or at least what they guess. This will be a compromise on FPS, but it should look relatively good, landing you as close to or above 60 FPS as possible. If you're not comfortable clicking on this, don't. We'll start with the quality presets down here. This is a more manual way of setting the auto set up here, if you know more about your computer. If you have a high-end PC with an RTX graphics card, you can comfortably play it on high or even epic. GTX cards, you may want to leave it on high for higher-end 1080s, 1070s, medium for anything below that, and low if you have a really low-end computer. The 3D resolution should always be set to 100% for the best visibility possible. The view distance, I normally leave it far, as you can see that it sets the distance from the player that other players and objects can be seen. Not only does this affect objects, it also affects players, so having this relatively high is rather important. Shadows I have turned off, which will be forced off if you use performance mode as well. Anti-aliasing should always be turned off, as it just blurs the edges of textures, making things possibly harder to see, but ultimately it does cost quite a bit of FPS, especially the higher you push this. The textures at the bottom you can leave on medium comfortably, unless you'd really like a better looking game. There's no real reason to go above medium, but of course there is low for graphics cards with almost no VRAM. The auto download high resolution textures I have on, but you can set this off, and high resolution texture reminders you should set off over here, as it'll remind you to enable the high resolution textures. We've simply uninstalled these before we even launched up the game. Finally, effects will set all the way down to low and post-processing to low as well. Scrolling down to advanced graphics, VSync should always be off unless you're specifically receiving screen tearing, where the top half doesn't sync with the bottom half. Motion blur should be turned off. Show FPS you can have on if you'd like to see what kind of impact this optimization has on you. We'll get back to rendering mode. Allow multi-threaded rendering should absolutely be turned on. GPU crash debugging off. Latency markers off unless you'd like to see latency in your NVIDIA overlay, but as you can see, you need to enable this using Alt and R. The NVIDIA Reflex low latency should be set to on if you have an RTX graphics card and on plus boost if you have a GTX graphics card. Finally, DLSS, we can use this after optimizing everything else in here if we really need extra FPS. While this does scale your game down and upscale it using AI if you have an RTX graphics card, it will improve your FPS However, in a competitive game, you don't always want to rely on AI to upscale things accurately. Any sort of visual glitch will be very noticeable for you, especially if you're rather twitchy. The biggest impact, however, that I've seen comes from the rendering mode option over here. Crank this from DirectX 11 to performance beta for the highest possible FPS. The DirectX 12 beta, in my experience, isn't the best for FPS and stability. If you do set this to performance beta, you'll need to click apply and you'll then need to restart your game by clicking confirm and closing it in the top right. Confirm and I'll click to start the game again. Heading back to settings, you'll see reduced options for performance mode over here. Once again, view distance far, textures medium and everything else here set to the lowest possible, off, off and low. Awesome, there's nothing else we really need to adjust. So we can head back, click change next to what game we're gonna be playing, and at the very top, click create, then create over here. Then play and we'll be loaded into a creative world. That's a relatively good place to test your FPS. Currently, this is what the creative world looks like. For you, it'll probably look quite a bit different, but there is a lot going on here. There's a lot of images, a couple of plants, a couple of trees, 
There's nothing too far out, but it'll give you a good idea of what kind of FPS you're getting. Currently, I'm sitting at the high 200s, low 300s. It's jumping up to 300 quite a few times. So that's really, really good, especially considering the fact that I'm playing on 2K. Then again, I do have a 3080 Ti. Playing on a 1080 Ti, however, my previous graphics card, I still got really high FPS. On a 1080 Ti, I got around 130 FPS on DirectX 11, 135 on DirectX 12, and using the performance beta, 230-ish and above. Here it's reaching 300. So I would think at this point I'm being more CPU limited by my Ryzen 3900X, but of course that's what happens when you have a super overkill graphics card. This game will definitely run fantastic, and especially even better when you're running it on performance mode. Finally, if you'd like to squeeze out a handful of extra FPS, there's a couple of last tweaks we can do. Hold start and press R, then inside of here, type in percentage, local, app, data, percentage, and hit enter. I'll click anywhere and type in Fortnite to jump straight to Fortnite, where I'll open Fortnite game, open up saved, then config, Windows client, and we're looking for game user settings.ini. Open this up, and in your favorite text editor, We'll hit Ctrl F and type in B Disable and hit Enter. We should then see B Disable Mouse Acceleration. Set this to True instead of False. Then we'll be scrolling down until we see Scalability Groups. We're looking for SG Shading Quality. Set this to 1. Foliage Quality 0. Effects 0. Texture 1. Global Illumination. Set this down to 1. And Reflection Quality to 1 as well. Then we'll scroll down even further. Then we'll hit Ctrl F and type in B Latency, hit Enter, set Latency Tweak 1 to True, and Latency Tweak 2 to 1, and save the file. Then close it, and close your file browser. With that comes the end of this tutorial. Thank you all for watching. My name is Techno over here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!